Hello and welcome to Landscape Photography Tips Episode 7. Today we're talking about how and when to use a circular polarizer for your landscape photography. So before we get started, I thought I'd just say that you know landscape photography, while well, all photography really is subjective, it's a creative art form, isn't it? So I can't really tell you when you should attach a filter to your camera. But what I can do is give you some guidelines, some tips that might help you in your creative process when you're out in the field shooting your image. If you're new to landscape photography, um, you know, a circular polarizer is a filter that you can attach on the front of your lens, such as this one here. Now, a circular polarizer is made up of two polarized glass elements that are bonded together, and they're set within a metal frame, and that metal frame rotates. Uh, the front part has got a filter thread on it and you can attach that filter thread to your lens so you can rotate the polarised glass. The more you turn it, the more it polarises your image and obviously then you can rotate it back the other way and it will depolarise your image so you can control the amount of polarisation that you're putting through your lens. So to quash a myth, and I didn't know this until recently, a circular polarizer isn't called a circular polarizer because it's circular or that it rotates in a circular way. It's to do with the way that the light is polarized. Now with a circular polarizer, that light is polarized in a circular way. You can buy another type of polarizer and that's called a linear polarizer. And these two are round as well and they also rotate but the way in which the light is polarized is in a linear fashion. So it's a completely different way of polarization. And now linear polarizers don't work particularly well with DSLR or mirrorless cameras. They can run into issues with metering and also autofocus. So if you're in the market to buy a polarizer, make sure you go for the circular polarizer or CPL as opposed to a linear polarizer. So now we know what a circular polarizer is, what can we do with it? So it's a fantastic tool for landscape photography, it really is. And it can make a massive difference to skies. It can saturate blues in the skies. It can also make clouds pop out, give them a lot more clarity and contrast. But they'll only work in a certain way. So for example, this is my light source lighting me now for this video. Pretend that that's the sun for the moment. If we're shooting straight towards the sun, we're gonna have little or no polarization at all. What we want to be aiming to do is to shoot at 90 degrees to the light source. So if you face the sun, your shoulders will be pointing at 90 degrees to the light source. So just look along your left shoulder. That will give you the optimum polarization. Again, if you look to your opposite shoulder, that will give you that as well. So if you're shooting away from the sun or directly at the sun, polarization will be very, very minimal indeed, or if not, non-existent. Another great way to use a circular polarizer is to cut through haze in the landscape. Quite often if we're in the mountains, there'll be a lot of haze between the camera and the mountains. And we might want to bring out the detail of the mountains, that clarity and that saturation. And it's quite difficult if there's a lot of haze between uh, the subject and the camera. So essentially haze is light being reflected through water vapor and when that light hits the water droplets it scatters the light and that's why we see this haze. A polarizer can really help you here. It can really cut through that glare, that haze that we see in the landscape. Quite often the more you are towards the light source the less the polarization is going to take effect very similar to what we talked about with the skies. So yeah pop it on, trial and error and just uh, see which areas of the scene work best with the polarizer and that might influence the way that you compose the image. You might get a much clearer shot uh, looking at 90 degrees to the light source than you would if you're looking directly towards the light source. So yeah, trial and error, put it on and just see you know, what, bring, what, what areas of the scene become more clearer. So both of those techniques that I talked about um, obviously have their limitations, but where the polarizer really comes into its own is for woodland photography and any photography that has water in the scene, so seascapes, waterfalls, rivers, streams, so the circular polarizer can really come into its own for woodland photography. Quite often in the summer when the leaves are very green and shiny, maybe in wet conditions, we'll get a lot of specular highlights, a lot white light reflecting off the leaves back into the camera. Now the camera really struggles to break through these reflections. It can't record the detail that's lost behind these white specular highlights. So using a circular polarizer can help to cut through those reflections. Cutting through those reflections means it can see all of the detail it'll give you a much more balanced exposure and a lot more saturation and it can really, really help 
get a balanced, even exposure in the woodland, especially during summer. So yeah, for woodland photography, circular polarizer is an excellent addition for your photography. Probably the biggest reason to use a circular polarizer would be if you're shooting water. Now this can be seascapes, rivers, mountain streams, or waterfalls. Circular polarizer can cut through the reflections on the water's surface, revealing all of those beautiful details below the surface. And can quite often, this can completely change your composition, especially if you've got some boulders or something that's leading the eye into the scene. You can really change the way an image looks by rotating the front element on the polarizer and just polarizing the water to give you that really unique look. And it can be a very, very valuable tool for any water photography. So if the circular polarizer is such a great thing, why not leave it on the lens all of the time? Well, like I said at the beginning, it's a creative process, isn't it? You know, we might not always want to take the reflection off water. Take this image, for example. This image here shows these beautiful golden larch trees in autumn. And had I used a circular polarizer here, it would have taken the reflection off that water. We would have lost that gorgeous reflection. So it would have completely destroyed the image. It wouldn't have been nowhere near as good as it actually is. And take this image here in the woodland that I shot recently. This silver birch looks beautiful. It's covered in raindrops. Uh, if the polarizer had been placed on the lens, the reflective white light off the raindrops would have been eliminated and we probably wouldn't have even been able to see those raindrops at all. Also, in the back of this image, we've got a lot of mist. And that's given us separation between the tree, the foreground tree and the background trees. Now it's this separation that really makes this image look uncluttered and simple. If we'd have lost that mist, which we might have done if we'd have put the polarizer on, it really would have made this image a lot worse. So having a clear idea of the look you're trying to achieve is critical to getting the best image. Now, sometimes I'm undecided, to be honest, and uh, I'll take several shots with different polarizations. So I'll take a shot without any polarization at all, then I'll maybe rotate halfway, and then I might do one with a full polarization. And sometimes you just can't make a decision when you're out in the field. And if you are undecided, it's much, much better to take several different shots and then look at it when you get back to post-production than it would be just to take one, unpolarize, and then go back to post and realize that you wish you had used a polarizer. So yeah, if you're undecided, just take a couple of shots and uh, yeah, hedge your bets. So now we've discussed what a circular polarizer is good for. Let's take a little look at probably some reasons why you shouldn't use it. Now, if you're taking a shot and most of the shot is sky and you're thinking about using a circular polarizer to enhance the sky, just uh, be a little bit cautious with this because if you're shooting maybe wider than 24 mil on a full frame camera, you can run into some serious issues with darker patches in your sky. So you'll get over oversaturated uh, patches in your sky, especially if it's an expanse of blue. So I'll be very cautious about this. And to be honest, I personally would not use a circular polarizer if it's just to enhance the skies. I think you can do this in post-production easier and with less side effects. Uh, if you use a graduated filter in Lightroom, you can reduce the exposure a little bit, add a bit more saturation, and add, add in a little bit more clarity as well to make those clouds boost. And you can get pretty much the same effect that you can with a polarizer without any of the side effects. So if it's just for skies that you're thinking about using a polarizer, uh, just just take a you know a second to think if you could actually get the same you know process in. Uh, Lightroom or Photoshop. Again, I certainly wouldn't use a polarizer if I was thinking about shooting a panoramic image. Now, a polarizer can add darker areas to your image. So, for example, if you're taking a four shot panorama, if they're vertical, you've got a polarizer on and the right hand side of your image is a little bit darker than the left. When you stitch those images together, you're going to be butting a darker side of the image up against a lighter side of the image, and it's going to be very, very difficult to stitch those images together. It'll probably stitch okay, you're just really going to see a different exposure in that shot, and it'll probably destroy your panorama. So I would go down the route of not using a polarizer if you think about doing a pano, or again, taking you know, your series of shots with a polarizer and then another series of shots without it, just to cover all bases. Another thing to remember as well is if you're paying hundreds or thousands of pounds for a camera lens, you're adding a polarizer uh, to the front of that very expensive glass. Now, obviously, 
polarizers probably are not as good quality as your lens elements, especially some of the cheaper ones. So, you know, you have to think about that. You're adding glass to the front of your lens. So I would only use a circular polarizer if it's gonna improve image quality or improve your composition. Using a circular polarizer will also increase your exposure time as well, so it's going to let less light in. Effectively, it's a very mild ND filter. This one here stops around about one stop of light. So, for example, if I was shooting at ISO 200 without the filter on, put this on, I'm going to be shooting at ISO 400 to get the same shutter speed. So, if you're shooting handheld, uh, this is obviously going to be a bit of an issue for you. Personally, I'm always shooting on the tripod when I'm shooting landscapes. I just like doing it that way. I think it slows the whole process down, so it's not too much of an issue for me. But I know many of you guys hand hold your shots, and if you do, it might be something to think about, especially if you're shooting in a lower light situation. So a few things to look out for when buying a circular polarizer. Now, I would say get the best you can possibly afford because it will last forever if you look after it. It'll outlast your cameras tenfold, it really will. Always pick a circular polarizer that fits the largest lens that you have as well. Or if you're thinking about buying larger diameter lenses in the future, look at the thread diameter and choose a polarizer that will fit those lenses. Now you can buy step-up rings uh, to attach the filter to your smaller lenses, which means you only need to buy one filter. Step-up rings are two or three pounds per ring and it's a very cost-effective way then of using just one filter on all of your lenses. So yeah, buy a filter for the biggest lens that you've got, save you a ton of money. Now, another thing to consider as well is whether you're gonna be going for a modular filter system such as this one, or if you're gonna be going for the screw-in type filters. I have both, I had this, I've had this one for quite some time now, but recently uh, purchased a modular system because I wanted to use graduated filters as well. Now, if you're going down the modular route, the modular system will have a circular polarizer as part of the set. My circular polarizer goes on first and then I attach a modular system to it, which is great because I can use it as a standalone circular polarizer or as, uh, as a set. But if you do decide to go for the circular type of polarizer, I definitely recommend getting these quick release Manfrotto adapters. If you uh, fit all the step-up rings to all of your lenses to get you to the largest size, you can then fit these uh, magnetic holders to them, and that'll allow you to quickly take your circular polarizer off the front of your lens. Now, it's so quick and easy to do, it really is, and I use them all the time for when I'm doing video work, when I'm using ND filters. It just allows me to quickly take uh, the filter on and off. And it saves so much faff, and especially in cold conditions as well. Even if you're wearing gloves, you can still take the filter on and off without any fiddling around trying to get your threads lined up. So I definitely recommend that and I'll leave the link to those in the description so you can go and check them out. Actually, there'll be a blog post that goes along with this uh, video as well. So if you're interested in looking into all of these methods that I've talked about today, you can, you can click on the link below and it will take you over to the blog post as well. And uh, yeah, feel free to check out the website and the rest of my stuff that's on there as well. So I'd just like to say a big thank you to everybody that's picked up a t-shirt from the website. I really appreciate your support. It's really helping me to run the channel and to keep the channel going on a weekly basis because it does take a lot of time and obviously money to, to run this channel. So your support is much, much appreciated. Quite a few people have asked me if I would consider doing some long sleeve t-shirts and I hadn't given it a thought to be honest. Uh, but yes, I have now got long sleeve t-shirts on the website. This is one that I'm wearing now, slightly different to the other Solitude ones. I've taken the text off the bottom just to make them a little bit more different. And I think they look really cool. So yeah, feel free to go and check that out, guys. I'll leave a link for the merch store down in the description as well. So if you're interested in looking at any other videos, Landscape Photography Tips playlist is at the top there. You can go and check them out. Subscribe button is down there. So if you fancy subscribing to the channel to see more weekly content like this, please go ahead and subscribe. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Please consider sharing and all that good stuff, guys. And I will see you next week. Take care.